As you progress through Glossika training, and here I refer to the core training sessions, not the supplementary training, which is, uh, includes things like dictation, you'll need to progress through and finish a certain number of skill sets. And this is what we refer to as the skills tree. As you complete the whole skill set, then you'll progress on to the next level, such as A1, A2, B2, etc. Now I'll introduce each one of those skill sets individually. Stative verbs. Stative verbs make up a large number of verbs, and these include verbs such as I'm tired and I'm hungry. Our feelings, thoughts, speech, and emotions are all about the state that we're in. Stative verbs can also undergo a change of state. Stative verbs tend to have two kinds of sentence patterns, those with an agent and those with an experiencer. In each of the verb training skills, we don't necessarily focus on tense, but you'll be able to practice these as we introduce other skills such as time, and also as we go up higher in the levels, we'll practice more of the verb tenses. Existential verbs. These verbs talk about the existence of something or the relation between two objects. Examples of ex existential verbs are there is and there are, and also verbs such as occurring or happening. The possessive verb to have has several different syntactic functions. The first one is person to person, such as I have a sister. The second one is person to object, for example, I have a car. The third one is object to object, which is sort of like a partitive case. Uh, so for example, the keyboard, uh, the computer has a keyboard. And the fourth one is an object to a person, such as the country has a queen. And so the tricky thing is that in some languages, sometimes a different verb is required for each of these. Location and direction. There are four kinds of location and direction. The first one is static location, which means there is no movement. And we can refer to this as abdessive. So it, it refers to at or on, uh, at a location. The second one is location, is movement towards a location or movement towards a goal. And so these can also be called uh, illative or inessive, uh, meaning towards or into. The third one is movement from a source, away from. So we can also call these ablative or allative. And the fourth one is an oblique kind of motion. For example, going past or around or any other kind of uh, directional, uh, which is not one of the previous three. Causative verbs. This is also a very large group of verbs, um, but they're very similar to, to stative verbs but the only difference is that they cause a change of state in the verb. So a very good example of this is the verb uh, to kill. The stative verb is to die. And so when you say something dies, uh, there, there is no object uh, to this. In fact, it's just changing its state from alive uh, to dead. But when we change it into a causative verb, we say to kill. And so this verb means that you're changing the state of that thing from alive to dead. And so a lot of verbs, uh, they may require two kinds of verbs in some languages, or they combine the meaning together into one word, such as to kill. Now, some, kind of, uh, some kinds of causative verbs can also have a resultative uh, state that we can state at the end of the sentence. For example, uh, to close the door, I'm changing the state of the, of the door uh, from open to closed. So I can say, I can, I'm closing the door shut. And so that is the, uh, the final state. Action verbs. Now this uh, category includes verbs of motion and also verbs of consumption. Uh, only a very few of them actually take uh, objects. Amount and quantity skill. This skill focuses on answering how much and how many there is of something. Negative skill. This skill practices changing everything that you've learned so far into negative sentences. Now, some languages, they require double negatives in the sentence, even though we don't require this in English. So uh, if you're learning Spanish or Russian, um, a lot of languages of Europe will require this double negative. Complex verb skills. With complex verbs, we practice putting modal verbs together with the verbs that we've already learned, such as can or should or might. In many of the languages that uh, you may be learning, you'll need to pay attention to whether that first verb actually changes. For example, it's conjugation. And maybe perhaps the second verb also changes, or the second verb goes into a, an infinitive form. 
So paying attention to these changes in the verbs will help you acquire the skill faster. There are also some languages that may use impersonal constructions. For example, um, if you say, I need to, maybe in that language they're going to say it in a different way, saying, to me, it is needed. So this is an imper impersonal construction uh, that you may encounter in quite a few European languages and maybe some other non-European languages as well. Now in some of the non-European languages you may be coming across modal uh, situations of the verb where they actually change the internal structure of the verb. And so uh, for example if you're learning a language like Chinese uh, you might actually add a de or a bu into the middle of a resultative verb to indicate that you are able to do it uh, or you were not able to do it. So kan de dao and kan bu dao, whether I can accomplish seeing something or I cannot accomplish seeing something. For example, I can see you or I can't see you. Timed action skills. In this skill, we're, we're going to actually practice the completion of verbs and the relations with the verb and adverbs of time. In this skill, you practice verbs in various aspects, such as perfective and the finishing of an action, or maybe that you had done something previously. In this section, you'll improve your ability to pair verbs with the adverbs of time appropriately. The valency skill. Now, a valency is simply just adding the number of arguments onto the verb. And what I mean by arguments is maybe the, the number of people that you reference uh, after or in, inside that verb phrase. So, uh, for example, uh, if, if I teach the children math, there's actually three arguments uh, in that sentence. But if I, if I tell John to teach the children math, then I've actually increased the, the valency. Or let's say I, I teach the children math with a textbook. Now I've uh, added something to the sentence. So when you add more things to the sentence um, with new, new clauses, without introducing, introducing another verb, you're actually increasing the valency. And so there's a, a variety of valencies that we can increase. Some are committative. For example, you're doing it with somebody. For example, uh, John and I are, are teaching the children. Uh, you can also do it, um, for example, the, the dative construction, which means that there's a benefactor in the sentence. For example, I'm, I give the book to John. Uh, so there are very different kinds, uh, various different kinds of uh, valencies that we can add into the sentence. And so in this section, we'll be practicing most of those. Complex causative verbs. Now, just as I mentioned in the last section with the valencies, in this section, we're actually increasing the valency of, of causative verbs. So, for example, the example that I just gave was I, I told John to teach the children. This is actually uh, sort of like a, a complex causative verb. Uh, for example, I prevent somebody from doing something, or I tell somebody to do something, or I help somebody do something. You're actually increasing the, uh, the valency of the verb. Complex time skill. With complex times, we'll be practicing the continuation of an action, starting an action, uh, stopping an action, simultaneous action, iterative action, and then uh, consecutive action. An example of this would be to keep or continue doing, start doing, to stop doing, doing while doing, doing one thing after another, uh, doing something before or after another action. The evidence skill. In this skill, you'll practice the possibility of something being true because you saw it or you heard about it from somewhere else. Some verbs that fall into this category are seems to be, appears to be, or looks like. This also contains a large number of adverbs, for example, that we use in English, such as apparently. And finally, there is the reasoning skill. In this skill, we ask and answer questions such as why. We also learn to string phrases together, such as the purpose of doing, the reason for doing something, you know, answering the, the why, for, for example, the because of doing, or for example, it was due to a reason. And so basically that summarizes all of the skill sets uh, that we cover in Glossika. Now, as you progress through A1, you'll touch on a number of those skills, maybe not all of them, but in A2, uh, by the time you get to B1, all of the skills are being covered. And some of the skills may have become uh, already very easy. And so uh, they were just kind of like a review, but we'll be introducing more complex vocabulary the higher you go up. Uh, and of course, by the time you get to B1, you'll be using all kinds of um, uh, complex time and, and verb constructions. 
uh, that include all kinds of, uh, all kinds of verb tenses. So uh, we're going to be adding all of that into the interface so that you can keep track of uh, your progress and see which skills you're actually working on at the time. So if you have any other questions about the skills, uh, we, we may also provide additional videos uh, to show you uh, each of the skills in more detail. I've got so much that I want to share with you guys, so don't forget to click the button below and subscribe.